Hey everyone, and welcome to the Sleepy Fox Yarn Podcast. My name is Holly. I live in North Carolina with my family, and we have a new family member here with me right now. This is Miss Chloe. She was born on April 13th, which is why I have not podcasted, because we were getting ready for her arrival. And I'm so obsessed with her and in love with her. Um, oh, Banks! No, you can't do that. Okay, let me, let me just readjust her so I can have a good grip on her. Um, welcome. This is a podcast not about babies. Um, this is a podcast about knitting, crocheting, cross-stitching, pretty much any type of crafting that I am doing currently that I would like to share with you guys. Um, thanks. My cat is rubbing up against my tripod. Um, I have this big ring light, you can see. I'm really sorry about the glare. I, I don't know what to do about it unless I go put contacts in, which irritate my eyes a little bit. So yes, you can find me on Ravelry as Holly Nicole 1316. I am on Instagram as Sleepy Fox Yarn Co. Um, I do have an Etsy shop. I am the dyer, designer, maker behind Sleepy Fox Yarns. Sleepy Fox Yarn Company. <laughs> Sorry, brain. It is oh, I. 8.35 in the morning. I am the only one up with this little one. Colin and Emma are still sleeping. So, yes, I figured I would hop on while it was quiet and try and film a podcast real quick because there is a lot to show. I have been surprisingly crafting more than I thought. Thanks. I'm sorry if there's little jerks or nudges to the camera. He just can't help himself. Um, he's everyone is obsessed with baby and wants to be around me and her so yeah oh I got chapstick on you I'm sorry so yes that is little miss Chloe Taylor I'm gonna lay you down okay baby um if you're new here oh you're okay yeah um if you're new here welcome um, I used to podcast very frequently. Um, I don't so much anymore just because life has, uh, been crazy. <laughs> so, um, yes, if you're not new here and you're returning, thank you for coming back and dealing with my hectic schedule. Sorry, I'm trying not to look at me. I'm trying to look at the camera, but I keep forgetting. Yeah. You will hear little baby coos throughout At, don't chew on my cord <sighs> cats he if it's there it's his apparently so like I said I have a lot to show um so let's hop into it I don't think I missed anything from the intro I live in North Carolina with my family three kids now three kids my husband cat and a dog in North Carolina yeah um, this is gonna be a long one so I suggest getting a something to drink maybe a snack it's gonna be at least an hour it's gonna be a long one okay I have some FOs and one of them you're gonna be like oh I know she's gonna have finished it it ain't here yet <laughs> um, first up though I finished Colin's socks these are just plain vanilla socks. These are these have been washed, used, worn. Um, I think the last time I podcasted was in January? February? I don't know. I cannot remember to save my life. Um, I want to say it was late January or early February. Sometime in there. It's been a while. It's been a while. Sorry, that song. Every time I say that phrase, the song comes up in my head. What, Miss Lady? So these are just plain vanilla socks. I do not have a pattern. Uh, 56 stitches. 56 stitches, two by two cast on. Um, a slip stitch heel. 
I think it's called a wedge toe. Kitchener the toe together. Um, this yarn is Knit Picks Felici in Firefighter. Um, so yes, as you could tell, they're not 100% matching like I thought. Like, they started out that way, and then somehow, some way, it didn't end that way. So, yes, they're not a 100% matching pair, but they're close enough. Colin loves them. What? You are just a little bag of noise. Just a little bag of noise. Um, so yes. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Do you want this one right here? Okay, there we go. We are happy now. So yes, that is my first FO. I did get this finished actually not long after uh, the last podcast. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to power through, get it done. That way he has socks to wear. So that is done. Next thing that was on the previous podcast, um, which I'm sorry, there's dog hair on it, uh, is the baby blanket that I was making Chloe. It was C to C. And it fulfilled my baby blanket need that I had in my life. I, it, it ticked all the boxes for me. As you can see, it's just a simple C to C. And I am not even kidding you guys. I played yarn chicken and I won literally by like a yard of yarn. Like when I had it, like I could hold it out straight in front of me. Like that's all I had left. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was holding on to it to show you guys. Sorry, I keep looking at myself. What? Come up here. So now you can see Senor Binks. Hi. He's like, you don't have a baby in your hand, so that means you can pet me, right? No, Senor. Not right now. Um, so this is the baby blanket. Um, this, the blanket itself, uh, the big C to C section is Lion Brand Mandala Baby in the Narnia colorway. Um, I believe it was Narnia. And then the white border I used, um, Cascade Yarns Anchor Bay, which is a 50% wool, 50% cotton blend. I know. Yeah. Um, the color is number three. It's basically like a white or a cream color. Like, and that's that. And I just did a simple single crochet and then double crochet around the edge just to give it a little border nothing fancy oh my goodness what is what is the matter you just want mama we'll try and do this with one hand we'll see how it goes um we'll see how it goes um if not i'll have to pause and wrap her up in a baby wrap you just want me huh yeah and that's fine i am okay with that baby snuggles so with those last two I do not have a pattern for them it was just you know basic C to C for the crochet baby blanket and then basic sock so this one because when she came home it was still pretty chilly out because she was born in April so we still had a couple we had a couple weeks still where it was still pretty chilly for her. So, yes. Yes, it was. So, I made her a little baby beanie that actually still fits her. Um, and um, the pattern is by Joyce Fassbender. It is the knits for everybody hats that I use for all of my hats that I make for everybody in my house. It is like the most basic pattern. It is super easy to do. It makes a hat that fits my kids every single time. It's it's just super easy. I love it. Um, 
I used Knit Picks Brava Worsted Here, let's in the color seashell. So this was also in her other baby blanket that I made. Um, I showed that two podcasts ago. Um, yeah, so it's like a nice light corally color. It's called seashell. Uh, Knit Picks Brava Worsted. Yes. Um, yeah, so I just, I knit that up for her real quick. And I think it wasn't in one night because it, it you know, I just got home from the hospital from having a C-section and I was on some really hardcore painkillers that I had a really fun time coming down off of. It was not fun. It was terrible actually this time. Um, so I spent... I think two or three nights working on that when I could and then I think on the third night I was like you know what I'm gonna get this done she needs a beanie that's gonna fit her that isn't gonna slip off like the the fabricy ones and got it done and she wore it and she loves it um I need to actually make her well now it's you know, 90 something degrees outside. So the last couple days, oh my goodness, sleepy. Um, sorry, the, I'm trying to keep my head down. So you're not getting like this crazy glare. Um, which I'm in my living room, by the way, couch, I, I guess you could assume that. Um, just because I wanted to be close to all of her stuff. So I don't have to get up and walk around the house and move everything around and stuff. Yeah. Huh. Miss hiccups. Um, so, yeah. I lost my train of thought. I forgot where I was at. Hi. What? Oh, your little zipper thing is probably rubbing your chin. Um, let's see. So that is all the FOs I have. That is it. Um, so we'll go to a previous whip, um, which would be my Estrella sweater, which is in my Naughty Knitting Sacks bag. Hold on. Ugh. Let's see. Um, my Supernatural tote by Naughty Knitting Sacks, who is Katie, out of Cumming, Georgia. Cumming. Oh, hey, bud. <laughs> Good morning. All right. Let's see. She just wants to sit up, apparently. She doesn't want to lay down. Say hi. Hi. So we have two co-hosts now. Yeah, you're calling. You just woke up, huh? Ooh, okay, we're going to pause. Okay, we are back. She just needed a diaper change. She's happy, but I'm prepared with a wrap. So if she needs to, you know, be tucked in, I am prepared. Yes. So say hi, Colin. Hey. <laughs> hi. Hey. Uh, Emma is still sleeping. Yeah, dad is at work. Yes, dad is at work. So this is my Estrella sweater. I will tell you, I have not made a whole ton of progress. And you'll be surprised that I've decided this is just going to be a crop top. Oh, what? What now? What now? What now? I think she again. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back. Baby is secure. Everyone is happy. Okay. So, my Estrella sweater. I literally made it liter a crop top. I did not do full sleeves. I just did... This is the sleeve that I was previously working on. Um, so, it is not a full sleeve. It is kind of like to here on me. So not quite a half sleeve it's just above um and then <laughs> the tension you can see oh, i know i know it is pulling a lot so i am going to have to block this quite aggressively 
my tension has it's just way off um I could pull it all back start again um but I really don't want to I just want to get it done if this sleeve is a little bit more snug um it is what it is so I'm hoping that when I am done and it's blocked that it'll be fine if it isn't then I guess I will rip out this sleeve and re-knit it again just because like I said the tension I don't know why like the floats look good but you could tell they're a little on the tight side I don't know what happened I hadn't knit on this in I literally just picked this up last week again to finish up knitting just because it is chapel. What? I still have both hands. I didn't chop off my hand. <laughs> oh, you pranked me. Okay. No, um, the chicken never pranked. So, yes, this is. What? She has a binky, bud. She's just tired. I think she wants. Um, so this I am using Haydenville DK by Valley Yarns. Um, so this is their colorway black, and the contrast is lavender. Um, I do have to say, I love working with this yarn, it wasn't extremely expensive, it is really nice to work with. Here we go, here we go, here we go. What happened? go get your snack um so yes I love working with this yarn it is really nice soft it is black <laughs> yes I know um the Astraeus is by Megan Reagan who is the bad wolf girl sits in it's on YouTube um you know she also has her own yarn company as well as you know her patterns which are amazing like I want to knit all of her sweaters I just got really impatient with this one and I was just like I'm just gonna make it an actual crop top Mommy. yes look at this yeah you got a bug bite yeah it's a big bug that's bite. a mosquito bite yes yeah, so yes I'm almost to finish with the color work Mom. I have Mom, can I yes. this on the top? That's fine. Um, I'm right here, so I literally just have these few last few rows of color work, and then eight rows, and then doing the Oops. ribbing and bind off. Sorry. So I'm hoping that by this week I can have it done. Um, because my dad actually flies into town on Friday. So I probably won't be getting much knitting time while he's here. Um, so working on my projects in between cleaning and babies and <laughs> everything else in between. So yeah, so I'm almost done with this. Um, I won't be able to wear it obviously during summer. It is a wool sweater. <laughs> um, so I'm really hoping that come fall I can actually wear this before it gets too cold that I need sleeves but cool enough that oh just a small you know cropped wool crop top would be nice to wear because I'm not I don't run cold I run very hot anyways so me wearing a full-on wool sweater probably won't happen but we are moving at the end of this year probably sometime in November probably early to mid-November we're going to be moving yeah and we don't know where we're going so we could be moving somewhere that gets a lot colder uh, so we need to bring our stuff 
Yes, we need to bring all our stuff. We could be moving to somewhere that is way colder than um, North Carolina in the winter. Yeah, so our house doesn't like like bath and like like the whole city like the face of like turning off and off and on. Okay, shh. Let me finish, okay? Um, so we could be going somewhere that's much colder. If we end up going somewhere warmer, then all of my knits are not going to really be used very much during winter. Which will be very sad for me because, yeah, it's sad. Um, so next, yeah, sad. yeah, the next project I have is, um, because I love the Bangby blanket that I made for Chloe so much, I decided that I was going to make another one. Wow, that was pretty. Yeah. So it is not the same colorway, although it does have a lot of the same colors in it. Um, this is also Lion Brand Mandala Baby. This is more rainbow. Oh, like wrap the light, like a lantern. Yeah. Um, this is in the colorway Diagon Alley, which is, you know, Harry Potter. I don't know how they got Diagon Alley from this. I don't know. Um, so... I am just doing basically the exact same thing I did with the last one. Um, only difference is I just watched my last podcast and I was using a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook. This one I'm doing four millimeters. So this one might be a smidge Mom. smaller. Yes, Colin. Uh, what are you doing upstairs in your contacts? No, I don't want to put my contacts in. My eyes felt really itchy last night. No, like your, your castle on this, like this. A castle? Yeah, like this castle. Oh, hold on. Let me finish this stitch your real quick. Your contacts castle. No. Um, so, yes. Sorry. Uh, it was dropping stitches, and I needed to refix it. So, yes. This is how far I've come with this. Um, this has not been something I'm, like, rushing to get done. This is just, like... I'm in bed after feeding her or while I'm feeding her, you know, getting the kids to bed. I can go after to that, I'm just go. sitting in bed before I go Mommy, to sleep. I can't get myself a bed. Yes, Colin, go. I know. Can I get through this? If I have to keep stopping every couple minutes for you to talk, it's going to take me forever to get through all this. Okay, I love you and I know you want to be part of the show, but I also need to get done. <laughs> I don't want to sit here for two hours because my legs have already gone numb. So yes, like I was saying, this is just a work on it when I have time at night project. Um, me and my husband have been watching Monk, which I never used to like because I thought it was weird. And the thing is, is when it came out, I was like 10. Wow. So me watching him, I was just like, he's weird, you know, like a kid. <laughs> Yes, Colin. I watch Monk in a like three day game as well. Okay. Let me I gotta adjust my legs because both of them have gotten to sleep. Cause I am sitting on the floor again. Because she was laying on the floor, so I wanted to be close to her, so yeah. Oh, I wrapped all my strangest thing back in the bed. So next up. Um let me actually Oh, I was going to say look it up on my phone. Um, I am working. Here, I'll just show this one first. Um, so I did frog the socks that I started just because I started knitting more and more on them. For me? No. For and me? no, Colin. Shh. And I did not like the way it was looking with the pattern. Nothing against the pattern uh, by... Kay Litton, so the crazy sock lady. I love her pattern. It is amazing. But with that yarn, you couldn't really see the texture. And it just, it wasn't looking the way I wanted. If I'm going to do it in a sock, I need to do just plain, plain old fashioned vanilla socks. But in the middle of that podcast, I was like, I should do a hat. I should have done a hat. And I was like, oh, that was a good idea. So that's exactly what I did. And I started a sock head hat that's um a, that's a funny. 
So, and this is the way it's looking. So these colors are reading a lot brighter on camera. They are more navies. So it is spiraling, but it is spiraling so pretty. Um, these are my colorways that I've dyed, uh, Sleepy Fox Yarn Co. Um, the main color of the hat is Celestial. And I will show you the cake. Sorry, I'm trying to look over a baby head and sometimes it's... So this is what it looks like caked up. Oh, wrong side. That side. Caked up. Yeah, caked up. So it's super pretty. I love it. And then the brim of the hat is in Midnight, which is this beautiful tonal navy. I love it. It's beautiful. But I'm biased because it's mine. <laughs> so, yes, that is what I'm doing. And it's going to kind of show a soft show up as like a shop sample knit hold on I still have the sock needles in here and it's getting all jumbled up all funny in here Mom. um yes bud no where's your tablet I'm recording on my phone you can't use my phone go find your tablet it's upstairs in your room I believe so, like I said, this is a sock head hat. What? Okay. So, this is a sock head hat. I am just using my Chow Gu needles, and they are 2.5 millimeter needles. Um, I just, I really love the way this is knitting up. And there's so many different colors in there. And it's really hard to show right now. Like, there's so many greens and yellows, oranges, blues. Oh, like, yeah, right here is probably, like, my favorite little section. I'm but... like okay, bud. Oh, it's so pretty. Like I said, but I'm biased because it's mine. Um, I um, do, if you like these colors, I do still have them available in the shop in, yes, bud. When you're done, Dad, can you do, like, tomorrow? No. Um. They are still available in the shop. I have them on um, my fingering base and so in fingering and DK 7525 blends. Um, make sure that is low because I don't want to get copyright. Um, all right. So yes, that is what is going on with that. I liked the sock and I was really hoping to have a sock in these colors, but I just wasn't liking the way it was looking so I figured I want a hat instead and I don't have a thin beanie like this that is one thing I really like about this socket hat is it's gonna make it isn't such a dense fabric like worsted that I will wear this more often because I have a lot of hair my head gets really hot so having something like this will make it so much nicer for me to wear Turn it down, bud. What are you watching? This. Okay, let's not show it. Okay. Um, so yeah, that is my other project. And then there's that one. And then I do have another set of socks going. And I believe these are actually for Colin. Yep. But I'm not very far on them. See? Right here. See? Those are my favorite socks. I tried them on. And you haven't tried them on because I barely have a cuff. So I do have a cuff started. As you can see. These are on my knitter's Pride 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, I'm just going to do plain old fashioned vanilla sock again. Um, I have, I started these, I haven't picked them up in well over a month. Um, just because my other projects, 
have been taking so much of my attention. Um, and this is in Cascade Yarns Heritage Prints. Uh, the colorway number is 42. I bought this in Virginia from a local yarn shop to me. And I think it was like crochet. It was a crochet. Crochet. Corn, crochet corner I can't remember but I know that they were closing down because they just weren't getting enough business there um and I think partially because although it was a small yarn shop they mainly carried like stuff like Cascade Yarns uh Rowan you know ones that are technically big box like manufactured yarns and not so much like indie yarn company um I think Cascade was like their main supplier um yeah so they I think they ended up closing down I have I haven't lived in Virginia in three almost three years so we moved here in 18? I, I can't remember. It's been a while. Again, the song. It's been a while since I... Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is a 75-25. It's supposed to look like that once it's knit up. So, a nice little... A nice little sock. But, um, this is also in my Lila Styles bag. It's... Edgar Allan Poe it is like my this is my sock bag this is what almost every sock goes into at some point because it's my favorite I love it um oh and the bag that sorry I completely forgot this bag that the um baby blanket is in is by Randy of random Randy's ramblings I don't think she has a Oh, she does. Um, her Etsy shop is Ansier Handmade. Um, I love this bag. It's a fleece bag. <laughs> Which most project bags are not fleece. But man, I love it. I do. And it's not interfaced, which means it, you know, it folds up, Mom. squishes down. Mom. What? I Don't show that video, please. What? Please change it to watch something else. I don't want you watching people shooting each other. Even if it is Nerf guns because they're adding realistic shooting sounds to it. Thank you. So yes, that is another project. I do have another one that was crochet that I started working on, which was the gingerbread men. Mom? Yes, bud. Uh, um, Stop showing the video. I cannot have it on here. What? Um, I'm watching a Okay. My coffee has gone cold. So this pattern, I don't have the paper for it. It is somewhere. I can't find it. I think it's called the steam line tank. I cannot remember who the designer is. Everything will be linked below in the description. So names, the patterns, where you can get the pattern. Um, sorry, itchy eye. Um, everything will be linked below. So I, although I don't remember the designer's name and I think it's called the steam line tank. Um, it'll be linked below. I wish I could have a picture to show you because it's a really cute top. Um, and I've started knitting it up. It's like this really cute v-neck tank and it has like um, slip stitch, not slip stitch. Um, I don't know what to call it. Yes. Oh, they're going to be in a fort for 24 hours? Yeah. Okay. So this is the tank that I have started. Um, it is knit in pieces. So you work the front panel, the back panel, and then you sew the two panels together. Um, this is how far I've come. It actually, there's a knot right there. That's so 
flipping obvious. Oh my gosh. Awesome. So as you can see, it's not some of my cleanest work. The uh, edge looks kind of wonky. Well, this side actually isn't too bad. There's only a few wonky stitches. Um, it calls for six inches. I'm going eight just because I don't want it to be super duper short. I do want some length on it. Um, so yeah, I'm knitting, I believe the two X size. So I also don't want it to be clingy, which judging by my, you know, um, I really love this yarn, by the way, I will talk about that in a minute. I don't want it to be super clingy and seeing as the gauge that I'm getting with these needles, it will be nice and drapey and breezy and I'm loving that. Um, but I love this yarn. Oh my gosh. I've never worked with it before, but this is a yarn it calls for, which is the Lion Brand Kobu, which is a 51% cotton, 49% rayon from bamboo. It is so nice. Like it is so soft. I love the sheen that it has for a top like it adds dimension to it so it doesn't look so flat um mine is in i don't know if that's lechen or lichen lichen i don't know how to pronounce it so yeah that is what i'm using it's what the pattern calls for i love it i wish they had darker colors all of the colors tend to be in not pastel but kind of you know bright colors like peaches like mint greens um and stuff like that so yeah that is all of the knitting and crocheting i have two cross stitch whips because like what one does you start one and then you find another one you like and you have to make that one so let me grab that so yes, it is all the stitching, all of everything this week. Okay, so if you can remember the last um, podcast, I showed you an acquisition, which was this. This is the January um, A Year of Mugs cross stitch, which it is new um, because when I looked, there was only February and it was on release. They have now since uploaded every single month, which I have saved because I do want to do every single one. Sorry, I keep looking at myself and not the camera. I'm so sorry. So this is what I started and it took me, you know, <laughs> five months to get to where I'm at, mainly because, you know, I had a baby. My mother-in-law was here for a while I was prepping for baby and baby got here. So I wasn't able to sit and cross stitch very much, but this is the progress I have made. I basically need to finish the cup and then let's see, write hot cocoa and do a couple hearts. So I would say I'm a good 50% done. Um, this was flying though. Like I was just sitting here, just boop, 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 going, going, going. And I love how it fits in my hoop, like almost perfectly that I don't have to move it around at all. I just worked on it and it is just, I love it. I haven't cross stitched in so long, um, that yeah, I just, I'm in love. So this is by Cross Stitch Design by Marcia Manning. Marcia. Um, so yes, I bought this on All About Cross Stitch or everything. Everything Cross Stitch, All About, something like that. Um, and they have every single one. I actually, that's where I go for all of my cross stitches now. I don't buy anything cross-stitch related from 
Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby, unless it's the actual floss, just because they don't have a lot of cross stitch stuff. Um, let me kind of, ooh, there we go. That way she, she's not being smothered by the other side. So yeah, this, I've been loving it. Oh my gosh, I love it so, so much. Um, yeah, but that is the website. I'm pretty sure it's all about cross stitch or everything cross cross stitch something like that I'm sure if you type one of those in or something close to it it will pop up um so yeah that is the progress that I have made on this one which I paused working on it because I was on that website just browsing you know because I get their newsletters of things when go on sale when things go on sale or um When things go on sale and stuff like that so i get their newsletters well not it's, 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 go not right now banks not right now so i put that one on pause because i saw this one i think it was mother's day where they had some on sale okay and i saw this one which says grandchildren are the bridge to heaven and it reminded me of my grandma so I saw this and I really wanted to make her something and just to kind of make her feel better you know just a little gift a handmade something so I love this and I'm going to put me and my siblings and her great-grandkids so my kids so all of the grandkids unfortunately problem I have there is 12 clouds. There are 13 grandkids and great grandkids all together. <laughs> so I'm like, oh poop, how am I going to do this? I'm thinking I can add a cloud here. Just kind of try and boop, doo, 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 doo. <sighs> I'm just worried that my cloud will be very noticeable when it's done and trying to center it is going to be hard so what I'm thinking so this cloud right here the one that says Mary I'm thinking I'm gonna try and copy it right here somehow um, and see if that works um, so I can get all 13 of us in if I can't and it ends up looking like garbage or I just can't figure out a way to make it look good, I might have to leave somebody off. <laughs> um, but I'm going to try and get everybody because there's 13 of us. Because there's four grandkids and one, two, three, nine great grandkids. So, yeah. This is um, A Bridge to Heaven designed by Marilyn Clark. I also got this on the website, like I said. Um, so yeah. And this is the progress I've made in, I'd say a week and a half. So I started in the middle. Oh, I don't have this one tied in yet. I started in the middle, which is ended up being like this cloud then I worked this cloud, or no, yeah, then I worked this cloud, so it gave me a place to start with the words, and I am working on the, the grand part at this point, um, so yeah, once I get that done, I'm going to do the rainbow, and then do all the clouds, and then writing in all the names and birthdays and stuff, so I'm really hoping to get this done. Realistically, I know it's going to take me at least a month or two, which would put me in July. So as long as I have it done, I, I'm not sure if I want this to be a birthday gift or a Christmas gift or just a 
hey grandma I was thinking about you sent you something gift <laughs> um there we go so I'm not sure what it's going to be yet um I think the sooner that I get it to her the better so it may just end up being a hey grandma I saw this I made it for you and I want to send it to you Unfortunately, I want to be able to see her reaction, but if I send it to her whenever, there's no one going to be around to, like, record her reaction to it, you know. But if it's Christmas or her birthday, then someone could sit there and I can send it and they can record her reaction to it, you know. So, yeah. That's where I'm at. I'm hoping to get grand gran gran finished today um because i've been work it's with these bigger letters it's been working to be about two ish letters every time i sit down to work on it which after this um you know i just have to do some a little bit of chores around the house a little picking up because we got you know three kids now and this one likes to make a mess with all his toys so yeah there's that and this keeps unraveling what so if you're a cross stitcher what do you do from keeping your fabric from unraveling because i'll tell you it's it's really annoying my grandma used to take wide masking tape and tape the edges and my mom did that too to stop it from unraveling but that in itself is such a flipping process and trying to find wide masking tape nowadays, I don't know. It seems really hard. Every time I find it, it's like the thin masking tape, not the wide tape. Maybe I should try painter's tape. That would be a good idea. Painter's tape. Because painter's tape is wide. Really wide. So, yeah. If you have a suggestion on what you do for my unraveling, sorry I keep looking at the wrong spot. Um, let me know because I would like to know. So that is all of my whips, all of it, which that was also an acquisition or hoarding. Um, other than that, I have not bought any yarn. Oh no, I lie. I bought the Kobu to start the Steamline tank and that was it. I'm trying not to buy a whole bunch of yarn. I want to try and get through stash as much as possible unless I cannot do like, so if I want a sweater, but I don't have a sweater's quantity of any type of yarn, then I'll buy it. Um, but a lot of the mittens and hats that I plan to make, because even though we're at the end of spring. Summer is literally coming up around the corner. I think June 20th is technically summer. Holy crap. Summer is here already. Holy moly. Um, I am going to start working on mittens and hats for the kids already because last year I didn't start until it got cold and then by the time I finished it, they got to use them for all of a few weeks before it started getting warm again. So I was far behind. I've promised the kids sweaters, um, you know, stuff like that, that I want to get done. I want to make her her first baby sweater. Yes, and your puss. What? I know you just want all the love. If there's no baby in my hand, you're up my butt. You just want all the love. Do not, no, stop rubbing up against the tripod. Um, cats. Cats. You're just a little stanker. So yeah, life update. Biggest one is I had my baby in, on April 13th. She was born at 125 VSC section because I was diagnosed with gestational hypertension. Um, so my blood pressure was pretty high, not to the point that I was getting preeclampsia, but I was, I had high blood pressure. Um, 
And when, you know, I found out that they wanted to have a C-section for me, it kind of didn't register. Like, I went to my 38-week appointment and she was like, yeah, you have gestational hypertension. I want to send you up to triage, get you checked out, and possibly admit you today. I was like, wait, what, 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 what? Um, Mama, let's go to watch these. You know what? Watch these. I don't like how they make it sound super, okay, don't show it. I don't like how they try and make Nerf guns sound so hyper-realistic. So it was um, quite a bit of a shock to me uh, because I was going to try and have her naturally. They were going to let me do a trial of labor. So try and just go into labor naturally without being induced. Just kind of wait it out until I was 40 weeks. Uh, that didn't happen <laughs> because of the gestational hypertension. They wanted to try and get me upstairs for a C-section. Um, which they were watching my blood pressure and they were like, well, you seem stable. We're going to send you home and have you come back in the morning. I'm like, okay. That next morning, I was so scared. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to. Uh, can we reschedule for a couple more days? Like, I just want to wait a couple more days. Because I thought she was going to be there anytime because I was having crazy contractions all the time. And they weren't consistent enough or strong enough to be active labor. But I was getting to the point of labor in the next few days. Like, I knew I was. Um, but they were like, no, we want to get you in for a C-section. So that's how that ended up happening. So that was fun. No. Um, I had great no nurses and doctors, even though the nurses were a little stingy with the pain meds. And it got to the point where I was in tears because they were only giving me Tylenol and ibuprofen after my surgery that any type of movement, I didn't even have to move. Just laying there, I was in excruciating pain. And it didn't get to the point where I, until I was in tears crying, I it was just like so much pain that they finally decided to give me like the actual pain meds, which are like the opioids. And I was just like, dude, what the hell? So when my doctor came in and I told her like, yeah, I was in a lot of pain last night and you know, they weren't really wanting to give me the meds. She was like, I prescribe the meds. Make sure you get your meds. I was like, okay. So I was like on top of them, like every four hours, like they should have been giving them to me because it's every four to six hours. But since I was so out of surgery, I was like four hours max, like any more than that. And it, it was getting painful. But coming off those meds this time, I ended up going to the hospital because I thought I was dying. My blood pressure shot up to crazy high. It was, I think, 156 over 100. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Um, I felt like crap. Like, I was cold and clammy. I was nauseous and lightheaded. And I just, I, f I felt like I was dying. Like, something was seriously wrong. So, Nick was even worried like I have never seen that man worried about my health like to this there's always been that like oh well I want you to be healthy like that's what every spouse is like you know like I want you to be healthy blah 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 but like he was extremely worried and like I've never seen him so worried for me in my life and we've been together 10 years so um yeah he ended up calling and they were like, bring her in immediately. But you can't bring your baby. She was only five days old at that point. And I was like, how can I not bring my baby? Like, what if I didn't have my mother-in-law here to watch her and my other kids? Like, what would I do? 
So, of course, I'm, like, in tears on the way because I'm like, I'm leaving my baby and I don't know if I'm going to be admitted to the hospital. And Emma was, like, the sweetest. She was like, don't worry, Mom. We'll take care of Chloe. And I'm just like, oh, my God, you're so sweet. And, like, that made me tear up. Like, I couldn't even say anything. Like, I'm getting teary-eyed now. Like, I couldn't even say anything to her. Like, I was just crying and walked out the door. <laughs> Which probably made me seem, like, so cold-hearted. But, like, if I would have said anything, I would have, like, I would have been blubbering. Like, sobbing and not just, like, teary-eyed crying. So, yeah. Like, you could see him. Because <laughs> it was the sweetest thing. Um, but, yeah. Turns out it was just, um, I wasn't dying. <laughs> It was me coming off of my pain meds because they literally only give me enough for five days. And I noticed that when I took it, I was feeling really bad. So I stopped taking it because I only had two pills left anyways for that day. And they were like, yeah, you're having a really hard come down off of these narcotics. And I'm like, narcotics? I'm like, oh, these are drug drugs. <laughs> And, like, I get it. Like, in my head, like, I knew that painkillers were drugs. But when she said narcotics, I was just like, oh. Like, it clicked that I was, like, on drugs. <laughs> so, yeah. Other than that, it's just been endless sleep deprivation taking care of this little one. Although she is doing a lot better with sleeping, she can go sometimes five, six hours. Sometimes, I would say every two to three nights, two to three nights out of the week, I'm getting a solid five to six hours of sleep. But this last night, she decided that every three hours was sufficient of sleeping and then she wanted to wake up which was not fun for me. Oh. But yes, I am, as of today, six weeks postpartum. So she is six weeks old. I'm super happy. I've been very productive. I've been getting stuff done. Like, thankfully, oh my God, thank the whoever is out there, the gods, the universe, whatever. I have not had postpartum baby blues. I haven't had postpartum depression, nothing. Which let me tell you, that is such a huge, huge relief. I know I'm only six weeks out. It could still hit me. But typically, if you're going to have any type of signs of postpartum baby blues or depression, it normally happens within the first two to three weeks. I have not had that and I am just so grateful to whoever is above because I had it really bad with Emma. I did have some with Colin, but it came and went and this time I haven't had it. So I'm, <sighs> yay. My coffee is really cold. So I'm just so happy about that and I think I was putting it out to the universe. I was like, let Chloe be the baby that fixes my body. That I don't, like, I'm just, I feel good. Like, that is what I'm trying to get across. That I feel really, really good. Um, other than that, like I said, we will be moving at the end of this year. Probably in November because Nick is going on recruiting duty for the Marine Corps. Which I am not looking forward to. I have heard so many horror stories of recruiting duty from spouses. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really not looking forward to it because I know it's going to be probably the hardest three years of our lives, of our marriage, of our kids' lives. Um, so yeah, we are hoping we put in a request to be near family in Missouri. So if that is the case, we will be getting a colder winter. Um, but also I'll have some built-in support system already ready to go with my in-laws. 
um, which would be ideal because I love my mother-in-law. I love my father-in-law. Um, and then my sister-in-law, she's having her baby in August. So we're going to have baby girls that are going to be the same age. You know, they're going to just only be four months apart. So that'll be nice. So we could, you know, potentially be each other's support system. I'm just, that is my hope. Fingers crossed. I've put it out to the universe. Like, please let us go to Missouri so we could be close to family. So I have that support system. And they asked him, like, why do you want Missouri? And he's like, mainly for my wife. Like, we have family there. So, yeah. Well, my thing is telling me that this video is going to be reaching capacity. And I have shown you everything that I have worked on except one project, which is the Gingerbread Man that I started like two years ago in 2000, no, three years ago. I think it was like 2018. Um, but I didn't make very much progress on it. I added legs to two feet and that's it. So it isn't even worth showing, but yes, I hope you guys have a wonderful week because it is Monday. No, Tuesday. It's Tuesday. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you guys when I see you guys. I'm hoping to try and podcast regularly. I've said this before, but I podcast when I podcast because life. So I will see you guys later. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I've said that already. But yes. Bye.